Normally, statistical procedures are developed to analyze rectangular and complete data sets. Now, what do we mean by rectangular? So, by rectangular we mean that the, an, the data for analysis has a rectangular structure where the rows represent the observations and the columns represent the variable of the observations. For example, let us take a study where height and weight of babies are measured. So, baby 1, baby 2 like this if we have say 100 babies, then they form the rows of the data set and height and weight or if there are any other variables, they form the columns. So, if we strict, uh, restrict ourselves to heights and weights, then maybe this is a case where we are measuring 100 babies and 2 variables on each baby. So, that means we have a 100 cross 2 data frame. So, we have 100 rows and 2 columns. Now, this is the idea about a rectangular data. It is also expected that each cell of this rectangular data has a value, a numerical value in it, meaning that for all the babies both the variables are measured, but sometimes that is not the case. It might so happen that some of the heights or some of the weights of some of the babies might not be recorded. So, we are left with couple of options. The first option is we make our data complete by throwing out all those rows which does not have or which has a missing value and analyze the data or we try to make an educated guess about what exactly is the missing value. And to make this guess which we formally call as imputation, we would be using a lot of techniques. So, in this session we would be focusing on how to get estimates of this missing values and how to implement them in R. So, in this particular session I would be focusing mainly on what is a missing data, what are the general techniques that are used for missing data that sort of thing. So, that would be basically a general introduction and overview of methods for missing data. And then subsequently we would go deep into missing data and see what are the maximum likelihood best procedures for missing data and what are the imputation best procedures for missing data. So, the objectives here is to introduce to missing data, to introduce to the missing data mechanisms in which broadly missing data can be categorized, procedures to deal with missing data and some Im intuitive imputation techniques which, which does not require a lot of mathematical rigor, but general idea and logic as to how we are going to proceed. Now, standard statistical methods are developed to analyze rectangular data sets which are complete in nature. So, here the rows represents units, cases, observations, subjects individuals etcetera, while the column represents the variables measured. Now, each cell in the rectangle represents measurement of a variable from a given unit. For example, the i j cell measures the j variate value of the i th unit. Now, by complete we mean that all cells in the rectangular data matrix have entries or non-null values. Now, when does missing data happen? When some of the cells do not have a value or is not observed. Take for example, a, a very simple economic survey where 
our respondent answers all questions, but refuses to answer questions regarding income. So, if that row of the respondent has 10 questions to be answered, then all the questions are answered bearing the one which specifies or which asks the question for income and that row is blank. Now, there are different types of missing data patterns. So, the first missing data pattern is called missing completely at random or the MCAR or MCAR as we are going to call. Now, a variable is missing completely at random if the probability of missingness is the same for all units. Example, in a survey, an additional set of questions are asked to a simple random sample of original samples. Now, what happens is we we are conducting a survey and uh, say suppose the survey has say small n number of samples and from those small n we choose small k and ask a few questions. So, we have the so answers for those extra questions in those k respondents, while for the remaining n minus k respondents there is no answer. But note that this k respondents have been chosen randomly from the n respondents. So, here to proceed analysis we can ignore the unit which has missing data and perform the analysis. This does not bias the inference because those k is absolutely randomly chosen from the n. So, it is as good as instead of asking n persons the questions or instead of thinking that uh, I have asked a question to n people and k have replied, I can just think that as if only k has been asked the question and ignore the remaining n minus k and do the analysis on k. Then comes the MAR or missing at random. So, here the probability that a variable is missing depends only on available information. So, respondents for example, respondents in business occupation is less likely to report income. So, whether income is reported or not reported is conditional on the occupation of the individual. For example, if the individual is a businessman, then there is a higher chance that income is not reported. So, this is missing at random, but here the randomness is to a great extent being controlled by what is the occupation. So, the randomness is conditional on occupation or it depends on the available information occupation. Now, the final is missing not at random. Here, the probability of a missing value depends on the variable that is missing. So, whether the value would be missing or not depends on another missing variable. Seems a bit complicated, but this happens in many ways. Example, respondents with high income are less likely to reveal their income. So, here we have two income category, two ways of measuring income, one is through income category which is high and low and one is through the exact numerical value. See, if I know that a person belongs to high income, only then I would be able to say whether there is a chance of he or rather if I know the income category of that person, I would be able to say whether there is a high chance that his actual income is noted down or not. Or maybe if a particular treatment cause discomfort. So, this is more of a biostatistics example. So, what happens is if a particular treatment causes discomfort, a patient is more likely to drop out from the study. So, then if there is a dropout, the dropout means that a patient discontinues the study. So, we do not have values for the observations of that patient. 
we really do not know whether the patient is going to drop out or not unless and until we measure discomfort. Now, if discomfort is not measured, then we are not in a position to say whether there would be missing values for that patient or not. So, here we see that missing value depends on a variable that is not measured or missing in itself. So, here the missingness depends on unobserved predictors. For the first case, it was the category of income. For the second case, it is the level of discomfort. Neither income group nor discomfort is measured for the patients. So, these are basically the three types of missing data problems. Now, why is missing data a problem? Missing data is a problem because most data analysis procedures are developed assuming that there is no missing data. We can throw away the missing data rows or rows containing missing data make a complete data set and analyze, but there are certain problems in that and the problem is that it leads to inefficiency and loss of power, systemic differences and biased results and obviously unreliable results. So, what are the strategies that we can adopt? The simplest is to analyze the data based on complete recorded units. So, this is the simplest procedure where the units having missing data is discarded. It is easy to implement such procedure and might work well when missing data is in very small amounts. So, here is a plot which shows that as the missing percentage increases the complete data is producing more and more biased estimates with increased confidence intervals. So, the idea is that we are increasing the missing percentage and estimate is steadily declining. The estimate is steadily biased getting more and more biased as the missing percentage increases. The next is imputation based methods. So, what are these? So, instead of the blanks, the missing values are filled in by some number and once the values are filled in by some numbers, this creates a complete data set which is then analyzed in the usual or the standard way. Weighting procedures. Now, what happens is in context to sample survey, the imputation is performed keeping in mind the design weight. So, what happens is here uh, the imputation is performed keeping in mind the design weight where the weights are inversely proportional to the inclusion probability of the sample. Now, model based procedures, this is by far the most sophisticated procedure which comprises of defining a model for the missing data and then using likelihood based techniques for inference and modeling. Now, what are the imputation based procedures that we can use? The fundamental thing that or the, the, the most intuitive thing that we can do is replace all the missing values by the mean of that variable and that is called the mean imputation. Another way can be what is called a hot take imputation, which means the imputed value is selected from an estimated distribution for each missing value and involves substituting individual values drawn from similar responding units. So, I would just see what are the units which are similar to the one which has missing and take the variable which is missing and replace it by the variable value of the similar one. The same thing can happen where instead of searching for the present data set, we use historical data or some external source or a previous value from the same survey and replace the missing value and this is called a cold deck imputation. Finally, we can use a conditional mean or a regression imputation where the missing value is predicted 
based on the available information. So, what happens let us take an example that we have height and weight and say uh, some of the heights are missing. So, on the available height and weight if we can construct a regression equation of height as a function of weight and then use the missing weights to predict the heights and impute those or put those heights in the missing value of heights to create a complete data set and do the regression imputation. Finally, comes the idea of multiple imputation, where one imputes multiple times for the missing item and for each imputation one conducts the complete data analysis. And this is repeated over and over and over for many times and this yields valid estimates of the standard errors of the parameters calc. So, in this session we have learnt about missing data. So, missing data was introduced and we learnt about the various techniques or procedures broadly that can be used for missing data. In the next session we would be starting with maximum likelihood methods for missing data, where all the different patterns of missingness would be once again defined in context to a maximum likelihood. So, if we have a distribution of the missing data how what each type of missingness means and subsequently we would progress into analyzing different in, in analyzing this data or uh, the missing data using different maximum likelihood based techniques. So, in the subsequent lectures we shall be dealing with the missing data patterns for likelihood uh, for or rather likelihood based missing and then we would move into what is called the EM algorithm 